Hi, this is Christian Cantrell, and I just want to show you something I've been experimenting with a little bit lately. Um, I'm a little bit of a keyboard nerd. If you watch my YouTube channel, you'll see that I have a whole bunch of reviews of mechanical keyboards, like this one right here, for instance. Uh, so when I was re-watching the movie Tron Legacy recently on a plane, um, I was watching that scene where Sam is typing on a virtual keyboard, and uh, he makes it look very easy and natural and works really well. I was very impressed. Um, I've tried typing on virtual keyboards before, um, particularly on the uh, virtual keyboards on iPads, um, and I'm not very good at it. Um, I'm much better with physical keyboards, mechanical keyboards, the louder, the clickier, the better. Uh, so I thought I would uh, do some experiments and see if I could create a virtual keyboard like the one in Tron that might work better than ones I've used in the past. Okay, so let's take a closer look at the keyboard itself, or keyboards, I guess I should say, since there are actually two of them. Uh, the keyboard is split between two iPads, um, and the reason I did that is because uh, one iPad is not large enough to accommodate a full-size keyboard. It's all written in web technology, so HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. So I can uh, switch over to my browser here, and when I make a request to keyboard.html, I can just pass in whether I want the right or the left side to render. Um, and I'm just launching it here from a uh, home screen uh, shortcut in order to get rid of the browser Chrome and to make it look a little slicker. If you're seeing a difference in color between the two keyboards, the keyboard on the right uh, is a retina display and the one on the left is an iPad too, so they have uh, slightly different color profiles. Uh, I'm sharing events between the two sides of the keyboard using uh, Node.js and Socket.io and um, also with the terminal. The terminal, of course, is not actually a terminal. It's uh, just an HTML text area. So it's all written with web technologies and it was a lot of fun to prototype. In fact, I think it was more fun to prototype than it is to actually use. But, um, but you know, it was fun to build and I learned a few things and uh, that's what it's all about. Okay, so let's give this virtual keyboard a try. Um, first of all, I can type pretty well on a normal keyboard. This is a Philco Magistouch 2 uh, with MX Cherry Brown switches, if you're curious. And uh, it's one of my favorites, and I can type fairly well on it. So um, this is a test to see how well I can type. So I'm not going to set any world records or anything, but I can type fairly well. So let's see how I do now on a virtual keyboard. This is a test to see how well I can type on a uh, virtual keyboard. Almost there. Good. Um, as you can see, I'm not snug. I am not very good. So there you have it. Uh, I think it's safe to say that this is pretty much a failed experiment. Okay, so what did I learn about virtual keyboards during this experiment, other than the fact that I don't type very well on them? Um, I learned that having a full-size keyboard isn't enough. I thought that having a bigger keyboard than what you get on the iPad would instantly make me more accurate and more productive, and that was not really the case. I'm a little bit better on this keyboard, I guess, than I am on the iPad's keyboard, but not significantly. Um, I realized that when I type on a physical keyboard, um, I'm constantly making adjustments, and so you're not aware of it, but I think with every keystroke, you're positioning your hands uh, sort of for the next keystroke, and so you're constantly able to make corrections, and it doesn't slow you down, you're not even aware of it. Um, you can just, uh, it's just sort of part of the typing experience. Um, I don't have that on a virtual keyboard, and so I can, I can you know, usually type a few letters okay, and then I'll drift, and then next thing you know, I'm completely off and I'm typing just your version. It's very frustrating. So I'm not really sure um, where this technology can go to make that better. I tried putting um, little screen protectors on the, uh, the J and the F keys so that I would be able to find the home row. But of course, when you put your fingers on a virtual keyboard and you try and find the home row, you're actually registering keystrokes. 
So then I tried to uh, synchronize uh, the accelerometer events with keystrokes. So the theory being that I could place my hands gently on the glass and I could find the home row. And it, it wouldn't be until I, I typed with some amount of force uh, that keystrokes would actually register. Um, that didn't work because I wasn't able to synchronize accelerometer events and uh, touch events, which is what I'm using here, uh, very accurately. Um, I won't say it's impossible, and I did kind of get it working, but not in a way that was quick enough and fluid enough that it felt like I was that I was typing on a real keyboard. So I feel like the improvements that have to be made to a virtual keyboard are changes that would keep bringing it closer to an actual physical keyboard. Now the advantage of having a virtual keyboard is that you just have this flat piece of glass that you can completely customize. Uh, you can change it um, to work with a specific application or you can use it for game controls or something like that and just have it completely customizable. And I think that the, the more you sort of add to it in order to give it a, a tactile nature, uh, the more uh, you're sort of making it a physical keyboard and, uh, and sort of compromising on the advantages of a completely virtual keyboard. So, I'm not really sure how this experience can get better. Um, I'm sure that it can, and I'm anxious to keep trying it because I would love to just have this flat piece of glass on my desk. Uh, I see it in movies. It works in movies. Uh, it looks awesome. I, I want to try it. I want to be good at it. Um, but for the time being, I think I'll probably stick with my mechanical keyboards. Thanks for watching.